All right, welcome to the Austin Downbeat, guys. I feel like it's been a little while since I've sat in the seat. It's so nice to be back. I've been doing live shows. Um, I'm really happy to welcome Patrick Conway to the show. Welcome, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, it's nice to meet you. I nice to meet you too. I I love it. You know, I'm kind of at the sorry, my light's so weird. Um, I'm kind of at that place where like when in the beginning of the show, I tended to know a lot of the people that I was, I was building and I kind of had to know people. And it's so fun to get people on that when I listened to your latest album, Meridian, I hadn't heard it. I hadn't heard you. And so it was so it's a different experience, you know, getting a fresh, like a fresh ear and a fresh sense of who someone is when they put their music out. So I enjoyed it so much. Oh, so it's well, really nice. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah and I'm a fan of the show. Uh, uh, one of my good friends, Harmony Kelly, you interviewed her, her and that fantastic show. And uh, I love her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's so <laughs> great. Um, so I, I did what I do with a lot of, a lot of people. I did it with you. I, um, I put my headphones on. I turned the lights off and kind of made it dark and cozy. I laid down and I listened to all of Meridian that you put out Meridian. Was it last year technically, or was it this year? I didn't even bother to look. <laughs> uh, so uh, technically I, I released it to the world and let people listen to it in January of this year. Oh, okay, great. So it's very, yeah. very new. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, very new. Uh, uh, been working on it. I, I, produce other people's records as my day gig. <laughs> uh, and so I've been making it for a long time. It's It was uh, 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 bits and pieces of stolen time when I could, uh, you yeah. know, get to it. And then it just felt like it was ready to release. And so it was a collection of songs. I'd, I was listening myself as a listener and, and thought, I think I have a record. It just needs a few of these little changes. You know, mm -hmm. what I thought were demos ended up with some some love and some work a little mm -hmm. bit of love and work i released it as a record so and uh and how do you know you're ready to do that that feels like this record especially um and you even write this uh, that it's about home and family and love and loss it and when i listen to it it does feel like you've really let us in and it does feel very personal and we hear your kids on it and you know how how do you know when something like that is ready to release for other people to to listen to? Well, uh, for me and my own music, I actually I actually have a lot of completion anxiety, yeah. and so uh, uh, I I don't know. On this one, I felt uh, I help people do that all the time. I, I listen <laughs> and I get and and I. Uh, uh, I listen to their ideas and their desires and I help them facilitate that. So I, I produce other people for that with my own music over the course of, of, of the time period that that was written. Um, that music was written. Uh, so I have two little ones and they are on the record. I have, well, I have three kids uh, and two of the little ones. Uh, my uh, uh, eight year old was, uh, was, was born uh, immune compromised. And so I was uh, at home with her for her first year. Uh, and so a lot of that was stolen time while taking care of an infant oh, yeah. who couldn't be out in the world. Mm. Um, and so uh, I did a lot of experimenting, a lot of the electronic elements. I'm a singer songwriter and I come from that background and uh, mm -hmm. played with an acoustic band and, and did all that kind of stuff prior to, to uh, having the kiddo. Um, but I got heavily into drum programming, electronic stuff, and it was all just experimenting, experimenting when she was asleep at night, everybody's asleep in the house. So it was a very intimate, quiet record for that kind of thing. Yeah. Then I had my next son and he, was, <laughs> or my, my next child, and my son was born, uh, with a, a thing called craniosynostosis, uh, and he had major skull surgery mm. uh, at three months. Oh, wow. And so then I was home with him for an entire year that he was in, in a helmet. Now, I worked on other people's studios. I'm a freelancer, and I, and I worked on other people's records and things. But uh, a lot of that was just stay home, dad. Yeah. Kids are down for a nap. Kind of, like I said, stolen time. People yeah. are asleep at night, and I, and, I, and I 
So it is a very intimate record, and 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 they ended up on it because taking care of kids in the days. If I have an open microphone and an idea, I you know I got them on it for that. Uh, so it is a it it, it is a, a very personal record. And then and then the uh, uh, pandemic happened, and we're all yeah. stuck. <laughs> I mean, boy, oh boy, you've just had one thing after another, haven't it you? Kinda was. It kind of was. Being home, yeah. Uh, uh, so. So the record for me is it's an exercise in not going crazy and and having a little bit of my creative life in the midst of what had happened to us all and then what happened to me personally being you know not stuck home but just home with my people. Yeah. And so so that is what the record became. Uh, I stole the uh, home family and love from Paul McCartney. <laughs> so that when, when asked about his first uh, solo record, he said, "Well, it's a family. It's a it's a it's about those those things. It's about home, wow. family, and love." And he made it at home, and I feel like it was a a demos record that became a record. You know, just yeah. uh, uh, anyway. I, I, I love uh, that. Well, it was you know the first track is um, it, I think it's called "Good Morning" or "Wake Up." It's like a instrumental, right? Wake up, yeah, yeah, yeah. and. And it's it's brief and and it's a really nice way to ease into what you're about to hear because the second track, am I getting it right? Is it Amor Fati? Amor Fati. Okay. Um, I'm laying there on my couch and I'm just and I have like great headphones and the way you recorded it, it's just the sound is so good. Oh, thank you. And all I could think in my head was that my ears were watching a movie. It felt like it just felt so well recorded and the sounds that I was hearing and the musicality and like the, I mean, again, it's been a minute since I've listened to it, but going off of memory, it just, it was such a great way to start off this record. I just, that oh, song yeah. really, really stuck out for me. And I think it was really well placed too. How do you figure out how you're going to place all of this in a collection that feels yeah. like it must be, really difficult to do like um <laughs> permanent set list <laughs> so it was it it was absolutely accidental and actually was determined by how i knew i had a record mm. i grabbed a bunch of of the songs that i that were in demo form or or just what i thought were demos and i put them into an itunes playlist mm. randomly Oh. And like, I, like i said then and i got this trick uh, after i read an interview by brian eno <laughs> who says he he records every day ideas and doesn't touch things for years and then he'll throw them all into a playlist randomly put, and put on shuffle and then just start doing other things like i don't know housework or gardening or <laughs> anything non-musical and just start listening and when something gets his ear he'll uh he'll make note and say oh i, I should go complete that it was really that kind of accidental thing. I took a collection of songs that I wasn't thinking about and put them all together. And I got to say, other than a friend hel helping me uh, move a couple songs around by suggestion, um, th that was the order that I put. And I and like I said, I I I just said to myself, I I think I have a record. Like my producer's ear then came yeah. in. Otherwise, I I like I said I. I'm kind of self-conscious about my own music uh, and and uh, and I have extreme completion anxiety. <laughs> so yeah. uh, just because well, you never think you're good enough of your own, you know, when you're to put it out in the world for yourself, you know, know. Uh, isn't that crazy? Because you're so good. It's so okay. crazy. <laughs> well, it is. It's so and you can sit in the room and someone can pay you lots of dollars to do their to do, you know, to be in charge of their project and really um, acknowledge your expertise. Are you sorry, Mike? No, yeah, okay. my, can you see me still? My, yeah. yeah. You went way on my screen. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't, what happened? That's okay. That's okay. Well, I'll just, I'll, I'll just talk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't see me? No, uh, I don't know why you went away. Hmm. Ah, shoot. Well, take your time. I can cut this part out. Yeah, maybe if we could cut for a second. I'm, I'm yeah. really. Sorry. 
That's crazy. All right. Very sorry. There you are. <laughs> it just went away. Okay. No worries. So um, what I was saying was I find it so interesting and ironic that people will come in and pay you lots of dollars for your expertise and your in your ear um, and really put you in charge. And then, you know, it's just ironic that you would think or have any bit of imposter syndrome or any kind of anxiety about your own craft because you are so good. But I yeah. do hear that a lot. So I think you're you're in good company because a lot of people have that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know what it is. I, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, long, I don't. Yeah. How long have you been like, when did this all start for you? What, what's the, the path kind of leading up to this for you? Uh, for this record or music? In, oh, just or, music or, in general. Like, were you always oh, singing and playing guitar and, and all? Yeah, well, I started very, very young. Um, so I started playing guitar when I was about 12 years old, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I wanted to be a, a, in music earlier, five or six. Uh, mm -hmm. I had older siblings that took me to concerts probably prematurely before I could have gone to concerts. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I was given a collection of Beatles records and Harry Nilsson records when I was really little. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, grew into becoming a fan of like uh, REM, the Water Boys, mm -hmm. World Party, stuff like that. And then by my, uh, I went to college uh, uh, to work in recording studios and uh, went, well, I went to college for music, uh, failed in the music department and ended up in the media department where I, where I learned how to run recording studios and things like that. And uh, uh, yeah, so very, very young. And then I've, I've been in rock bands and punk bands when I was a kid and, and uh, I've always been doing it. Um, I moved to San Francisco when I was in my 20s and worked out of recording studios out there and released my first two records when I lived there. I lived in, uh, so I lived in San Francisco for 10 years working in recording studios uh, and playing music in California. Um, I lived in Hawaii for two years, producing Hawaiian slacky guitar music and, oh, and, cool. and, uh, and then I've been in Austin for the past 17 years. Oh wow! Where so, where are you yeah. from? I'm from St. Louis originally. Okay. Yeah, Midwest. What a cool yeah. place to be from. I don't meet a lot of people really ever from oh, yeah, yeah. St. Louis. Yeah, it just seems like such a. Was it a good place to grow up? Was there, you know, was there kind of a music scene there? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got my start um, playing in local bands. Uh, uh, when the guys in Wilco and Sunbolt, yeah. they were Uncle Tupelo. Okay. Uh, we were all peers playing in the same oh. little dive clubs, and obviously they took off and did what they did. And uh, and um, so it was it was a great music scene. Uh, yeah, in my early twenties, playing in clubs and things like that. That's where I cut my teeth, be, learning how to be in bands and rock bands and stuff. It was a uh, uh, a fiddler who. Uh, uh, I met when I was in college or just out of college in St. Louis who had moved down here to Austin that got mm -hmm. me to move here. And he and I had a, uh, have had a band here for the entire the time that I've lived here. Oh, and, do you still play with him? Uh, occasionally we, we play for, uh, so I had a group here for, uh, I've had a group here for the 17 years that I lived here called the Lost and Nameless Orchestra. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a two fiddlers, a piano player, and then I sing and play guitar. And uh, uh, we play. We've played here for years. We had many years where we were more active than we are now. And now we tend to, uh, after all these years, just kind of take corporate gigs and things. And <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it feels like you've played lots of different genres you said punk and rock and all that what's your favorite i mean do you miss the punk days do you still do you still enjoy that type of music i know when we get older and we have kids and it's yeah. like <laughs> you know i love the idea of going out to shows late but it's like the reality of it it's yeah, hard no, I, you know uh well the that band was uh uh two fiddlers we did old time fiddle and irish fiddle tunes mixed with my americana kind of singer songwriter country rock type thing okay, yeah. um 
yeah uh i still like to record electric guitars and make yeah. that happen um uh it's hard to explain I, I mean it's hard to to uh uh yeah i guess yeah i don't i don't yeah i i, I miss being in a band yeah. that's active and stuff like that um but uh but but i i, I don't know i it doing doing what i'm doing now i guess is aging hopefully trying to age gracefully <laughs> <laughs> doing yeah, and not give up doing music i what yeah. what happened to me when i had my kiddos um, uh, my little ones and then during the pandemic i got heavily into uh uh, uh electronic music and orchestrated um cinematic music mm -hmm. and so kind of as a as a as a side hobby or hustle uh i do that kind of music for 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 film and video work as well yeah. and that kind of got incorporated into my singer songwriter work mm -hmm. um and so that's why some of the electronic elements are the are are, are on the the record uh There's so it, it's hard to say i like i like all different kinds of music and i, yeah. I think as i get older i try to Put all that into my own music you, yeah you know. well that so. makes sense and that that definitely makes sense with meridian there's a moment and i can't remember what song i feel like maybe it was earlier in the in the listening so toward the front of the album where there's a moment in one of the songs where it's um a violin and a and a and a drum beat and it's just like those two things hanging out. And I really, really sticks out for me in my mind. Like that was really nice to listen to. It sounded, I don't know that I've ever really heard those two things together in that way. It, it just really left an impression in my head. It makes me want to go back and find that song. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do yeah. It again. <laughs> you know um, what I mean? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah. I'm, I can't. Uh, I can't get away from my folk, uh, my folk uh, 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 background, you know, and our folk music background. Um, but the the all those elements really, I mean, I, it's it's nothing that I'm doing that's new. It's just my my take on it. Uh, mm -hmm. All those elements work together: uh, uh, acoustic <laughs> instruments up against uh, uh, electronic instruments, and it's so so much is available for us to experiment, yeah. you know, with that. Uh, uh, so th yeah, so that that's it. Uh, uh, like all all on that song, Amor Fati that you brought up. Those are all uh, synthetic drums. That's not a real drummer, but mm -hmm. but drum loops and manipulating that stuff can make it feel like yeah. that song was kind of an accidental uh, uh, Paul Simon. It felt thing. very yeah. Gracelandy and, yeah, and very yeah. Paul Simon, but but again, definitely, you know, not in a way where I felt like it was, you know, encroaching at all. But it for those of us that that record Graceland is, I mean, it's in my top ten as just a human being at forty eight, walking and on this earth, listening, you know, having listened to as much music as I have, like Graceland is top ten album. For me yeah and on that particular song if i could get all the real people to do it that'd be really cool <laughs> I, I didn't have that luxury and but yet exactly. it still had that kind of group that, that and that's what the electronic part does for me is i can i can draw on any any color or palette and and put it in there and uh and yeah. and help and it, it, it will help the songs you know what i mean yeah so. and, and as a listener it's just like bonus for us because there's just so there's so much layering that you can do how do you handle that when you're playing live you have a show coming up may 8th at the o4 center i do yeah you and ray prim and ali holder and phoebe hunt um where you'll do like songs in the round right yeah yeah this is Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, how do you, do you curate a little bit or do you, how do you handle, cause some of your stuff is so layered and you can't obviously have <laughs> yeah. a tiny piece, you know, like <laughs> well, singers and drum players. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Oh, so, so the, the, the future desire is to, is to maybe put together that kind of show. 
Yeah. Uh, right now, I've worked all the songs out to where I just play them with acoustic guitar and sing yeah. them in their different versions. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the second uh, in the round that they've given me to host at the uh, O4 Center. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, yeah, if this hopefully if this comes out beforehand, people will get tickets and, and come out because it's an amazing venue. I um, love the O4 Center. Oh, it's just incredible. I had I, uh, I had taken a long pause from playing out just because I was really busy. And I uh, uh, dumb lucked into an opening gig for Warren Hood uh, <gasps> at the end of last year at the 04 Center. Not dumb lucked, I just asked Warren if I could open for him. And and <laughs> and it was and uh, it was just a fantastic show. Uh, Warren had, you, you know, uh, uh, the whole whole place filled and uh, and his audience is just, they were just warm and inviting. And I had like one of those gigs mm -hmm. uh, uh, where, you know, when you're playing and, uh, uh, and you're in your own skin, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that this is what I do and, yeah. and what I want to do. And, and so I made an effort from that gig. It's almost like that gig said, okay, I got to get back out in the world again and start playing. Uh, I got to get out of the studio and in front of audiences again. I, I got a, a fantastic reaction that night and I, and a fire under my belly, belly to, or under my belly. I, I got a fire uh, under myself to, uh, to say, okay, I think I have a record. I'm going to put it out into the world and, and I'm going to go try to get more gigs and things. And, uh, and, uh, and I've only tried the 04 center <laughs> as far as trying to get the gigs that, and they've graciously given me these, uh, songwriter in the round nights. Uh, um, had a successful one in January with Betty Sue, uh, Michael Fracasso, uh, and Natalie. Uh, Natalie, yes, Natalie Price. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah fantastic song. I'm and I'm I'm friends with Michael and and uh, uh, and Betty Sue, but Natalie was fantastic that night. Uh, she's and, she's amazing. I actually yeah. saw her at the O4 Center. She did a her late last album release there. And it's just, you know, it was filled to the brim with just people it, that love you. You know, it just, it's it's one of those venues that I've always been there and it's full. There's so much love in the room. Yeah, yeah. Comfortable. There's great parking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all, all of it. It just sounds I mean, good. Like, yeah, yeah, like it's it's a great, it's a great place to see a show. So yeah, this next show coming up with uh, with with Ray and Ali and and I, I'm old friends with Phoebe, but uh, uh, and and my the fiddler that was in my band for years plays with Ray uh, mm -hmm. and is in his band now. Um, is but, it Kim Kimbo or? Uh, 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 yes, Kimbo or yeah. Kaz, yeah, Kimberly. <laughs> so my band, Ka uh, uh, Kimberly from Ray's band, uh, she she joined our band when she was 12 years old and. <gasps> And she grew up in 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 my group, so uh, uh, yeah. So she's like in her twenties now and out in the world playing with other people and things. But uh, yeah. yeah, one of my favorite things about doing this show is I get to just have such a little peek inside the weaving of this community and how I love finding out that like, oh, this person knows this person too, and they're friends. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. like, I'll have two people come on a show and. And then I see that they're writing together or I see that, you know, they're doing something together. And it just makes me so happy to to help with connections and then also see the ones that are there um, when well, people know each other. It was your suggestion that uh, that that got Allie on this bill, actually. Oh, good. Oh, I, yeah, I, that's yeah, right. Was, you texted I was me. Lost. I, I had a bunch of people who just couldn't do the night and I, and I was pulling my hair out going, why do I host these things? I don't. I can't yeah. find anybody. I can't find a, a fourth person in, and, uh, yeah. and yeah. so, um, yes. yeah. Well, and she's been very sweet in email, but I'll be meeting her that night. So <laughs> Allie's, Allie's awesome. Good. I'm glad you, yeah. I think I sent you a very robust list. <laughs> it was, it was a whole list of names. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, oh, good. It's, it's stressful being the host of those, uh, to be honest, uh, mm -hmm. uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I do my live show, it's like, yeah, it's a production, you know, you gotta, and it's, and it's your, it's your thing and everyone's looking at you. So yeah. It oh, is. <laughs> Mostly it's that they send me the, uh, the daily <laughs> ticket count of how many we've sold. <laughs> and so it's just like, <laughs> uh, you know, cause yeah, you gotta it makes you get and do all the other work that you have to do, like hassling people and going yeah. on social network and 
Well, I will definitely, media. I'll yeah. help you with that. Even if this doesn't air, it might not. I'll pull a little bit of this oh, and, yeah. and cut it out so we can, you know, push it out so we can fill it, that it, place. I love yeah, it. yeah, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. So, so new album out this year. I, I can feel that fire in your belly. And yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm excited for you. I think it's time for you to get out there and get on those stages and and let people hear you. I'm I'm really excited. I'm a new fan, and so I feel like oh, yeah, I want to come see you play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've and I've I've yet to really even promote like singles and things. So doing ah. all the work that you have to do. So uh, I'll I'll be starting that work up. Uh, 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 closer to this next date and uh, and things like that. So yeah, for the shows that are happening right now, it's mostly uh, acoustic guitar. Um, uh, but I know a bunch of musicians and and yeah, I, I want to I want to put together the band version of it and, and yeah. get that out there and playing it. That'll um, be so fun. Well, yeah. I will be there. Excellent. Well, thank watch. you. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping by. Really, it's yes. really nice to meet someone new. And I really enjoyed listening to your album. It was such a, thank you so much. Such a really listening did. experience. Like I said, I felt like my ears watched a movie. It is quite cinematic. You do have, I, you know, the fact that you write for film and, and that more kind of cinematic makes perfect sense because you do that so well. And I love the way that you blend that in with your music. It's just... It seems that, that, like you're having fun, you know? That, that, that was new for me as well. Yeah, uh, I'm just saying, well, yeah, I can have a couple of instrumentals on a singer-songwriter record, and it works because everybody that I love has done that. The Beatles do that, and, you know. And it's, it's like, your thing, so just do what, what is in your heart, and I love, that you, I love that you had the confidence to do that. I think sometimes it can get an artist's head to just second-guess or overthink or, like, instead of just letting it be the truest expression of Patrick, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it, just, it feels like you gave us your truest expression, really genuinely. Um, and it and it was such a, an honor to listen to it. I feel like it's a big deal to put music out. I, I always say this, but you know, I just, I will never sort of desensitize myself to that. Like I really respect the work and I just yeah I really well, enjoyed listening to it. When you second guess yourself as an artist, or you think you know, you know when 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 as you get older and you realize you have other responsibilities and things, and you have the, you have your life going along. Um, what I was reminded and what what made me just say, okay, I'm gonna just release it. I've, I'm I don't want to be in a world without music, and mm -hmm. so it's not a silly thing to do, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, I'm such a fan of so many other people's music and I have the ability and the desire to write my own. So why shouldn't I put it out in the world? It's easy today to do it, you know, yeah. so. Amen um, to that. What a wonderful way to finish this conversation. I love it. <laughs> thank you so much. All right. Well, be sure to get out there at May 8th at the O4 Center to check out Patrick Conway, Phoebe Hunt, Ali Holder, and the very funny Ray Prim. <laughs> love him and we will see you guys next time thanks for watching bye thank you cat